We have ventured way back in the past recently to the year 1602 and the reality of Earth 311. But now it's time to flash forward and I guess sideways a bit <laughs> to the reality of Earth 90214. Not to be confused with 90210, just FYI. The noir verse, which explores a world where Marvel heroes exist in the Prohibition era. Welcome back, Nerd Squad. Today we'll be counting down the top 10 most powerful Marvel noir superheroes. Let's get into it. Number 10, Captain Namor. In this reality, Namor is the captain of the submarine vessel known as Dorma, which is usually disguised as a fishing trawler. He is the ally to Tony Stark's Iron Man in this reality and helps the adventurer, Tony Stark, during his quest to find the hidden underwater city of Atlantis. Namor ends up losing his ship during this adventure and later saves Tony Stark's life because of this, claiming that Stark owes him a ship, which, yeah, is fair and also a good reason to save his life. Captain Namor doesn't have any superpowers to speak of, but still keeps his pointed ears in this reality, and this is because Namor actually sliced his own ears and the ears of his crew to help him identify them, making their ears resemble shark fins. I mean, ouch, but hey, it does look cool. Number 9, Angel. Thomas Holloway was the hero known as Angel. He and his twin brother Robert grew up at Welfare Pen, where their father was a prison guard. As such, he learned much from the inmates at Welfare Pen about the criminal underworld as he grew up. After the corrupt system resulted in the death of their teacher, Sean Cassidy, and later their father, who took his own life, Thomas was taken in by a well off family who raised him. He and his brother Robert worked together, aiming to make the world a better place, becoming both investigators and vigilantes. Thomas Holloway was given the nickname. Angel when he was a kid for saving one of the prisoners at Welfare Pen from the electric chair. He would later adopt this name as his superhero mantle. Angel didn't actually possess any superpowers per se, but he was a skilled acrobat, fighter, and detective. And in the noir verse, that's all you that's all you really need here. And friends, before we move on to the next spot, just a quick reminder to click that like if you want to hear about maybe more from the noir verse or maybe just more from alternate realities in general. Ooh, alternate realities. Number eight, Wolverine. Wolverine in the noir verse is still pretty powerful, but is not a mutant with powers in this continuity. Still, he does fight with his signature trademark weapons, his claws. Except that the claws we see him brandish in the alternate reality of Earth 90214 are weapons and not actually his own bones. Wolverine Oddly enough, has two different backstories in noir, and it's never really explained as to if they actually connect, are related, or rather, which is considered to be the actual true one in this continuity. In one series, we see him as a bootlegger who spends most of his days intoxicated, and in another, he is known as a hard boiled detective with a dark and troubled past. Either way, though, he's still tough as nails and the best at whichever he does. Number 7, Mr. Castellone, or Frank Castle, as he's also known known in the noir universe. Frank Castellone Sr. was a single parent who returned home to New York City after fighting in World War I. His wife had died from cancer and so he was left to raise their son Frank Jr. alone. Instead of wearing his skull vest or t-shirt in this reality, this version of Frank actually has a skull tattoo on his chest. Pretty badass. He attempted to protect and train his son when their family got tied up in a gang war. Mr. Castellone is an experienced fighter and firearms expert, similar to his 616 counterpart. but just based in the Prohibition era instead. Number 6, The Demon. Kurt Wagner here is more of a neutral figure, really? If that. But in the main continuity of Earth 616, Kurt is considered a hero and a member of the X Men, and so for that reason, we're just gonna count him here as a hero for the purpose of this list. Kurt, the demon, Wagner, as he's known in this reality, claims to be the world's greatest escape artist. He ended up being hired by Weapon X, which in the reality of 90214 is tied to the German government, and was working to capture the American spy Mimic. He made his first appearance in X-Men Noir, The Mark of Cain, in issue number one. Number five, White Widow. White Widow is Felicia Hardy. She, like her 616 counterpart, usually anyways, doesn't really have any superpowers in this universe of Earth 90214. She also becomes infatuated with Spider-Man here, but is primarily involved with various villains and mob bosses. Before all of that though, she was the lover of Benjamin Urich, and acted as his contact when it came to gathering evidence on various officials and basically looking at all the corruption that was going on in the city. She managed to gather this information through her club, the Black Cat. After Yurik's death, Felicia confronted his murderer, the Chameleon, who was disguised as Jonah Jameson, Yurik's employer, and shot him to death. I love how much of like a fatale she is in this. It's so cool. 
Number four, Daredevil. I actually really like this alternate version of Daredevil. Like, I like him a lot. His power is very similar to his Earth 616 counterpart, and like his main continuity version, is also blind. But what I really love about him is his backstory. He became blind after attempting to defend his father, a boxer, who was attacked in front of him and killed for not throwing a fight. Young Matt attempted to defend his father, and as a result, got his head smashed into a wall, causing him to become permanently blind. Daredevil here also gets his alias from his profession as a stage performer, where he is known for his amazing stunts, hence his name. While he isn't a lawyer here, he does assist his friend Foggy Nelson, who in this reality is a detective. Everybody's a detective in the noir verse. I love it. Number three, Punisher. Punisher noir, as he's known, is Frank Castiglione Jr., the son of Frank Castiglione Sr. His whole vengeance mission is actually about avenging his dad's death as opposed to his children and wife. Caught up in a Yang war after refusing to pay the Schultz his protection money, Frank Sr. was attacked, and Frank Jr. decided to take up arms and get revenge for his father's death. Frank Sr. had taught his son well, preparing him for what he knew would be the war to come as a result of their choice to not pay that protection money. As such, the Punisher here is very similar to his 616 counterpart when it comes to his skills with weapons, tactics, explosives, and hand to hand combat. Number 2, Iron Man. Iron Man doesn't have any superpowers of his own, but instead relies on technology for his super abilities, like on Earth 616. Although I think on Earth 616 now Tony might have some actual powers attached to his body, but yeah, I think he can control tech. Tony comes armed with his own Iron Man armor here in the Noirverse. Initially, he was on a hunt for the Jade Mask, which he believed would cure his unexplained heart condition, as opposed to relying on the electrical device, which kept him alive. He would be betrayed on this expedition and later team up with Captain Namor on his ship, the Dorma, to search for the lost city of Atlantis. In the reality of 90214, Tony's father, Howard, is also revealed to be the supervillain Baron Zemo. What a twist! Betrayal after betrayal for Tony here. Number 1, Spider-Man. Spider-Man in this reality does still have his powers, but is also known for being a decent investigator besides. He would go on to take on such villains as the Goblin, who in this reality is a powerful mob boss. The Goblin was also the one responsible for his Uncle Ben's death here, which is a part of his vendetta against him. It's personal, like it usually is with Goblin in most other realities for Peter besides. Spider-Man actually has the most villains probably of anyone in the Noirverse, but I guess that's because most of the Noirverse, like, he's the draw for it. It's very Spider-Man focused for a lot of the stuff we see. This version of Peter is also capable of producing organic webbing and is willing to fight with firearms. What are some of your favorite characters from Marvel's Noirverse? Who do you think is the most powerful hero in this reality? Which villains do you think are the most terrifying? Let us know in the comments below. And speaking of comments, it is time to turn to some comments from one of our latest latest video's top 10 weirdest Marvel What If Comics marathon. Dreefa Snowflake comments, Black Bolt talking in his sleep is the most hilarious thing for me. Yeah, Black Bolt talking in his sleep is pretty funny, also just like Medusa's reactions to that. Mac Welch responds, Amanda looking gorgeous. Well, thank you Mac, that's so nice. I don't know what to say when people compliment me, I'm just like, I guess thanks. J Price shares, would like to see what if the thing was married to Sue Storm, and what powers would their children have? There's actually a reality where that happens. I can't I can't remember it off the top of my head, but I think it's the ultimate universe and they have children. I don't know if they have powers. I can't remember that part. Yeah, but I think it's the ultimate universe, so 1610, check it out. And that's all the time we have for comments today. Be sure to comment down below to have your thoughts and feels shouted out in the next video. This has been Top 10 Nerd, and I'm your host, Amanda McKnight, saying thank you so much for watching and reminding you, as always, to stay nerdy, YouTube.